Hello. Thank you so much for tuning in to Essential Technology. My name is Beth ritter -Guth. I'm the Associate Dean of Online Learning and Educational Technology at Northampton Community College. And we are going to take a few minutes to review some essential technology terms, tips, and tricks for you. Let's get started. So let's cover some basic terms. We're going to cover what is a smartphone and what that actually means. We're going to talk about Wi-Fi versus Bluetooth and what those two things are. We're going to discuss Internet of Things or IoT, but what most people call a smart device. We'll talk about social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We'll talk about hacking and how senior citizens are the number one target and what you can do to prevent hacking. And we're going to talk about basic phone settings. Okay, you have one of two smartphones. A smartphone means that your phone does more than just make phone calls. So you either have an Apple or you have an Android. And you can see on my screen, this top phone is an Apple. The bottom phone is an Android. Sometimes an Apple phone is called an iOS device. And then an Android phone is sometimes called a Google phone. And the way you'll know the difference between them is if you have an Android phone, you will always have this Google search bar here. Apple does not have that. But Google does, and that's one quick way you can tell the difference between the kinds of phone the kinds of phones that are out there. Now let's talk about what Wi-Fi is and what Bluetooth is versus cellular. So both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are used for providing wireless communication, right? So um, Bluetooth, however, is used to connect short distances. So your phone works with your TV or your phone works with your microwave, that's a short distance from you. And if you go out of range, it'll disconnect. Wi-Fi is used for long distance connection. So providing web access or access to the internet, your, um, if, you, if you drive and you use Google Maps, that's relying on Wi-Fi because that's long distance. A cellular network connects all the different phones through, through cell towers, and that's what allows you to make phone calls. So you don't need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to make a phone call on your phone. Um, you don't need um, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi uh, to use um, your maps on your phone because it will default to your cellular network. So it's just important to know the difference between the three uh, because some devices rely on Bluetooth, some rely completely on the Wi-Fi, and some are relying or will kick over to your cell network. All right, Internet of Things, what we call IoT or smart devices, that's usually what people call them, are, is any device that shares data wirelessly. So if, uh, if, if a wire is not needed to connect them to share data or share information, then it's a smart device or an IoT device. Some examples that you might have seen around you, EasyPass, the little thing that you put in your car for tolls, now that there aren't people in toll booths anymore, right? An EasyPass uh, is one of the first IoT devices that uh, we all were exposed to. But now, televisions, remote controls, clocks, refrigerators, and even your phone is consider considered an Internet of Things device or an IoT device. Social media is an electronic communication created by users. So it's anything created by us, right? Regular media is created by companies. Social media is created by us. So it's an electronic communication platform to share information, ideas, personal messages, or other content like videos or photos. And the four big ones are Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. 
Facebook is the biggest of the four and that it's a complete platform. So you have a wall, which you can see here in the picture of things that you post and then your friends all have a wall where they post and you can put your ideas, you can put pictures, you can put videos, you can share things that other people have shared with you and you can usually see their material if you are friends with them and we're going to talk about how to do that. Twitter is also a social platform but it's a social platform that really allows you to share small bits of information in 200 characters which includes spaces and punctuation and you can also share links to videos and you can also share pictures but it's very short and as you can see you don't have all of the choices that you have in Facebook you can pretty much make statements but something in common between Facebook and Twitter is that you can comment you can like and you can share and that's true on all social social media platforms and when you have um, multiple tweets, like if you post something and somebody says, oh, that's awesome, can you give me more information? And then you post a link underneath that, that is called a thread. So you might have a tweet thread of a discussion that you have on Twitter. Instagram is a social platform, much like Twitter, but instead of being word-based, it is picture-based. So it allows you to post photos and brief statements. It's owned by Facebook, but as you can see here on, on the example, it is mostly photos. So if you're really interested in arts and crafts, you might follow somebody who posts pictures of arts and crafts or quilts, or um, if you like to travel, you can follow different people who travel a lot and post pictures of their travels. You may travel a lot and want to post pictures of your travel. Facebook is very popular among uh, mid to older adults and Instagram is very, very popular with younger adults and with teenagers. So it's very likely that if you have grandchildren, they use Instagram more than Facebook, although your son or daughter may use Facebook more than Instagram. Celebrities and politicians often use Twitter the most because it's short and um, and easy to follow and read. LinkedIn is a version of Facebook, but it's for professionals. So everything um, in LinkedIn is geared toward the professional, uh, connecting for jobs or looking for jobs or sharing professional information about different industries. So it operates exactly like Facebook, but it is um, but it is for professionals so for example on my LinkedIn I have my I have my uh, curriculum vita posted um, you might post your resume there and I'm connected to people in higher education in uh, the teaching of English which is what I taught for years so so this is much more of a professional platform but it functions very much the same way. You probably won't need a LinkedIn account, but it's at least good to know that it's out there in case people talk about it. All right, let's talk about staying safe on your phone. So senior citizens are the number one target for hackers. And that is because hackers want your money and they want your good credit. So and they know that most senior citizens don't know how to check to see if they've been hacked. So a good principle uh, for your phone is to add contacts. Put, uh, put the contacts into your phone of people that call you often. Be sure to include Moravian Village in that so that you know when somebody calls you or texts you, you know who they are. Never answer a phone call from a number you don't recognize. And it's okay. If it is somebody important, he, she, or they will leave a message and then you can call back. And really a good rule of thumb is let people call, let them leave a message and always verify, always call somebody back, always call <clears throat> someone you know and trust to get more information before acting. So um, it's just like uh, practicing for preparing for a fire, stop, think, and then act. So keep those tips in mind. 
Um, and just keep in mind that the U.S. government, including Social Security and Veterans Affairs, they will never call you out of the blue. They will always send certified letters for the first bit of communication, and then after that you might get a phone number, but that very first time they will never just call you and say, you have to give us your information or we're going to take away your Social Security. That will never happen. The government does not communicate by phone in that way. If somebody calls to try to get money from you or to take any action to help somebody, to help a friend, a loved one, ask for a number and then come call someone you know to verify that information. One of the ta tactics that the bad guys use is to make you feel like it's so urgent that it has to take place right now in this phone call. That is never the case, right? So a hospital, um, a police station, right? They, they're never going to behave that way. So um, take a number and then call somebody to verify. This just happened to my mother-in-law. She got a call from a young sounding person. My mother-in-law wears hearing aids, so it's very difficult for her to hear on the phone. So uh, it was a phone call saying that her grandson, my nephew, was in Virginia. He's 17. And um, he had been pulled over for DUI and was being held in jail and that she had to send $5,000 bail so that he could get out. And the bad guy said, you know, don't tell my parents, you know, because, you know, they would be upset. Now, in our family, we don't operate that way. If anybody's in trouble, we're going to help each other. So that alone was, you know, would ha should have been a flag to her. And I've, I've gone over this with her many times, that if you ever get a call like that, call me and, and let me know. So she called me, she was crying, she was so upset, she was so concerned. I said, you know, Joanne, number one, Michael is 17 and there's no way his mother would let him drive to Virginia. Number two, he is in school right now in Northampton High School. And, you know, and number three, um, let's call Lori, his mother. So, you know, I called my sister-in-law, she called her mom. And, you know, in, you know, five seconds, we had it all sorted out that this was indeed a scam. And so then I took actions to report the person to the FBI and the phone number. So be careful. Never, never feel like you have to act right in that moment. Get a phone number, call them back. Now, they sometimes will give you a legitimate phone number. Don't call back that phone number. Call back a phone number of somebody you know. So your daughter, your son, a neighbor, a friend, call somebody. And if you don't know and you think you're being hacked, you can call the non-emergency line of the police and they will guide you in. Don't call 911, but call the non-emergency line. For those of you that live at Moravian Village, go down and talk to one of the one of the folks downstairs and they will help you to, you know, figure out whether this is legitimate or not. Right? Most things do not have to be acted on within the first five minutes. You can you can uh, pause to ask questions and get help. So never fall prey to scare tactics, tech, scare tactics and never ever send money or personal information without speaking to somebody first. All right, let's talk about your phone. So this is your phone and um, this over here is an iPhone and over here, this is an Android. They actually work very much the same. You can see that everything we're going to do happens in the settings button. So on an Apple, it's this little gear and on an Android, it's this little gear. So you will want to find this icon and it's usually located on your home screen, which is the very first screen that you look at when you're looking at your phone. Now, when you're in your phone and you're in your settings, over here is what the iPhone looks like and over here is what the Android phone looks like. So just take a look at all the different things that are here and you can see general kind of covers everything about the phone, display and brightness, your security and your battery and your privacy. If you have an emergency, um, you know, you can, you can click on all these. These are um, called chevrons, these little arrows. You can click here and it'll expand the menu. And these same things exist over here on an Android phone. So everything on an Apple is also on an Android. 
So to manage your display settings, you want to, um, you can, you can decide if it's bright or dark. You can, you can choose between light and dark, whichever is better for you. And you can choose the brightness and you can see Apple and Android have the same options. You can decide whether or not to turn on your location services and which apps have access to knowing where you are. So you can see on an Apple, there's uh, on this Apple, there are a lot of different apps that require location. If you use Google Maps or Waze, which is a map service, you have to keep location services on for those apps. But you don't have to keep location services on for every app that you have. And apps are all these different little programs that you choose to put on your phone. If you need some help with accessibility, you can click on your accessibility um, within settings and it'll give you all kinds of choices about how you can zoom in or if you need voiceover. And you can play with these to see if, um, if any of them are useful to you. And again, both Apple and Android provide accessibility functions. That is the end of my talk for today. If you have any questions, um, you know, please write them down and the next time I'm in to see you, I can address them or you can uh, send them to me by email. And I look forward to meeting with you again. Be well, all the best.